Hey guys, it's Oliver from Spitfire Audio with an inaction for the Studio Woodwinds library, the last addition to our studio series. Uh, in my piece, I'm using all three libraries, the Studio Strings, Studio Brass and Studio Woodwinds, so you get a good overview of how they each sound individually and how they sound together in one piece. I'm using the professional versions, uh, so the difference between core and professional is that you in a professional version you get more mic options. So you have, have two close mics, two tree mics, ambient mics and outrigger mics. Whereas in the core version I only get one tree mic option. I also get extra instruments. So for example here in the woodwinds I get the bass flute, the core anglais, the contrabass clarinet and the contrabassoon which you won't get in the core version. To get uh, more information please check out Paul's walkthrough. Also check out Christian's in-depth uh, which uses all three libraries. Let's dive into my piece. I'm going to just play you a quick section. So basically my whole piece is based on these uh, motifs, like here we can hear the bassoon solo starting it off. So I just love the, the solo bassoon, it's one of my favorite lyrical instruments. So this is one way to use the woodwinds by having these wonderful solo uh, instruments. Uh, they're very agile and in this dry spot they give you a lot of option um, of, in terms of mixing. So you can either add reverb, um, you can have them really dry. So again, if you have only the close mic selected and no reverb, you really achieve a dry sound. Uh, here I've chosen the ambient, the tree and the close, so I've got a bit of a mix and I'm also using an external reverb VSS3 large warm hall actually I have to across the whole orchestra uh, slightly different amounts I just really like the sound again if you want to hear the dry version please check out Paul's walkthrough um, so there you will hear in detail how it sounds just naturally from the library again uh, programming hugely important I usually play it in having my hands here using the dynamics especially with the legato I'm using only dynamics the expression is just the overall volume of the instrument so I usually leave that the same spot important again having these midi notes overlapping and what I do is sometimes I like to think like I have to breathe or I'm playing the bassoon so on some point I have to breathe, I can't just have a really long line just played in one breath. So I leave these little gaps here that is basically for the player to take a breath and play the next phrase. I'm also programming the vibrato. Sometimes I'm playing it while I go along. Sometimes I know exactly where I want the player to do vibrato and I draw it in here in the MIDI region. Let's have a listen again and, and listen out for the programming and the vibrato. And stopping there and you can hear the reverb tail it's just it adds a tiny little bit so it's not a really dry close uh, dead stop which I don't want in my piece uh, at this moment and again so this motif is kind of changed slightly throughout the whole piece and played with different combinations so I'm not going to go really into detail of each of the MIDI information but I'm going to show you how the timbre interact together and what am I doing with each section so what am I doing with the brass what am I doing with the strings what am I doing with the woodwinds so Again, one thing to use the woodwinds is in these uh, lyrical lines. So the flutes here at three. So we got three flutes together. Doubling up. So that's another thing. Doubling up other instruments. And then, of course, the runs, which we'll get to in a bit. So bassoon kicking off and then 
the flutes already come in together with the violin as a counter melody there. Again, programming, hugely important. As I said, vibrato here with the flute as well. And uh, of course, a similar thing for the strings. And legato, overlapping MIDI information always. So this is my first section. Again, here the horns come in, kind of marking the harmonic structure. Same thing with the breathing there. Basically here my whole orchestra comes in, marking this first chord, which is an E-flat minor. Really warm and detailed sounds here with the brass and strings together. And then the woodwinds take over. Here my alto flute and the oboe create the, the continuous melody line. So the alto flute, again, very beautiful and warm sound as well to play these really lovely lines. Again, maybe a little bit long for one breath, so you always got to think about that. And of course, uh, vibrato, this was played without. So let's just have a quick listen with, so it gives you more expression, of course. really lovely tone. Again, I'm using a little bit of reverb just for you to see. I can just turn off all the uh, reverby sounds and then just play it dry for you, just to get an example. And uh, yeah, just this really shows that it's like such a versatile library and you can put these players in whatever spot you like, you know. And in this piece, I've tried to recreate an orchestral setup and put it accordingly in the right spot. I'm also using panning quite a lot. Uh, if we go here into my mixer, you can see all the strings are panned. Important, right click, use the stereo balance. Otherwise, it just turns down one side instead of taking all the audio information and placing it to where you want it to be. This as a quick side note and a little trick. Yeah, so ha let's have a listen to this next section. So pay attention, the woodwinds are carrying the main melody. The strings come in in swells, they add a little bit of, of counter melody and interest. And the brass are staying fairly low, choral quality. Uh, here the dynamics not going above the middle. That means here, I'm just going to play it to you, it keeps that choral sound. As soon as I go close to the middle or over the middle here, it turns into that raspy sound and you can actually play a lot with the dynamics of the whole piece if you, if you control that really carefully. And you will hear later on I'm going into that raspy quality to give that said dynamic to the piece. Let's have a listen. So again, really the alto flutes and the oboe really taking the leads there. We have a little bit of a counter melody down here in the violas. Just going to play you this string line for you so you can hear it. It's almost like just a little statement of a, of a, of a touch of a counter melody there. One more time up here.
Again, I'm using the vibrato control here for the strings as well, just to add that. If you do as well and like a bit of a crescendo, like have them doing a little bit of vibrato, it just adds to the realism and to your overall dynamic. The brass here, again, playing it uh, fairly simple. Just following the chords, not doing too much movement because I've got movement here in the strings and the melody is playing and swirls or runs are coming in. So you don't want to overcrowd your arrangement or orchestration. Here we've got the runs. Let me just play them for you. I just absolutely love writing these runs with the woodwinds. It just adds magic and uh, just another color to, to your composition. Quite a lot of reverb, I like it because it adds uh, 3D to your piece and I'm interchanging these uh, runs here so to add a bit of realism again I have for example here I have a slightly different uh, mic setting for example I have just a touch less of the tree and sometimes I pan it a little bit differently so it sounds like a different piccolo is, is taking over the line so if you write uh, runs uh, you have one piccolo doing the starts and the other one finishes it or one piccolo does one bar and then the next one takes it over uh, also for uh, breathing purposes and dynamics and just here also in within the samples to add realism so if we just have a listen so here that's what I did interchange them so I have these runs but they're played upwards and downwards basically by a different piccolo doing the same for the flutes down here exactly an octave below just again to add a bit of thickness to these runs uh, to shine through just want to show you how woodwinds sit just with each other having the melody played and these runs here I'm using trills And then going to the next section, my flute carries on with the melody. It's this time being doubled by the alto flute, not by the oboe. So what I said is kind of a similar melody. It's even the same chords. It just repeats, but I'm doing different combinations to advance the piece and bring tension in. And here, for example, I have a listen. I bring in the bassoon, which to me, it's, it adds a little bit of maybe evilness or like a slight more tension rather than having the alto flute and the flute together. They're quite harmonious together. Uh, bassoon. And there we will go into a section where the whole orchestra plays uh, these motifs. So here I'm passing it around, bassoon, then combination with flute and oboe. Um, then a bit of a counter melody here with the strings, then flute and alto flute, and then flute and bassoon. And yeah, again, like always kind of staying in, in a similar chords or going back and forth from chords, uh, sometimes doing a bit of harmony in the lines. So for example, here, if we solo these two lines together. There we go, it sounds quite lovely, uh, the bassoon and the flute. As I said, it adds a little bit of, for me, darkness or evilness, uh, anticipating the next change there. And then going into my wildest section, again, play, the whole orchestra is playing these motifs. Uh, I have the strings really high up, basically taking the lead. It will be doubled up with the flutes. So. They're going in octaves in the in the later part, and again the vibrato all the way up, uh, full on espressivo, and then let's have a listen how I double this up here with the clarinet and the flute. Oh. 
Oboe coming in as well. And it's amazing, you just get this kind of new timbre by doing these different combinations. Uh, if we have the brass in, obviously the brass adds the, the big chunk, again, going over this middle mark of the dynamic I was um, addressing before, just to achieve the raspiness of the brass. Easing out there, letting the oboe take the lead this time. So the oboe hasn't really uh, featured as a single lead line. It has been doubling up in the beginning. And here I thought it's quite a nice touch and tone. It has something melancholy about the oboe, I feel. So to, to go towards the end and reflect the piece, I find the oboe a very suitable instrument. Let's have a listen to the low end strings here, what they can add. <laughs> So to make it a bit more clear, they're basically double up the low section of the brass. So if I just solo those two, just so you can see what I'm doing orchestration wise. <laughs> My dark section there and then of course we have the runs here you can see and I'm just going to solo it for you you can see and hear how I'm passing around uh, the, these runs from one piccolo to another piccolo from one flute section to another flute section having the clarinets doing runs and so I'm just creating this variety and I think realism uh, to a certain extent by passing around these lines So now we've got all the section analyzed, I would like to play this whole part uh, all together. And again, here, the oboe playing what the bassoon played in the beginning, but a fourth higher. So before I was doing the change here, uh, B minor to E flat minor. And here I'm going E minor to A flat minor. So the same concept, but slightly different instruments. So it creates different colors. Um, I'm using a pizzicato bass together with bassoon staccato. Bassoon staccato, um, classic use for like comedy stuff, for example. But I actually really like the tone together with a... Uh, uh, basis pits. Very sparse here as well. I have uh, some tremolos in the strings if we have a listen. Again, two, sim two chords back and forth. But if we have uh, listened to the woodwinds, the woodwinds just can, can make such a difference in just little details you can change and combinations. 
clarinet and flute then coming in. And then I'm doing an outro, bringing back in the brass as well in the choral quality and having the alto flutes again, just making a warm melody line there to end my piece. Trills. And here, let's just have a quick listen to only the brass. So you get, again, this very choral quality, the trombones and the horns. Cool. I hope this was insightful and you could get an overview of how each of these libraries work, how they sound together. And I hope my piece was inspiring, giving you some ideas for writing. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. And if you want to check out each of the libraries individually, please check out Paul's walkthrough. Uh, don't forget to check out Christian's In-Depth, which features all three libraries as well. Take care. See you in the next one. Bye bye.